Hello, my name is Arthur, and in this video I'm looking to end this platformer series. So, I've just put the airplane together and made it quite simple, and its purpose is to transport the player to the next level. So, it's a kinematic body following a very simple script. It has a sprite, an animated sprite, which is the four frames of propeller motion, which this is just another blender render and a very basic model. Then it has an animation player to animate this sprite, which is the beam that will shoot out of the airplane, because it's kind of a joke that the humans are going to abduct the alien. So that's kind of a little joke for the game. And then a ray cast to detect when the human is underneath the, or the alien is underneath the airplane. So when the player is underneath here, the ray cast is set to just the player layer. The layer 6 was set to be the only can detect the player layer. So in its script is very basic. It has just the most basic move back and forth function. So its speed is multiplied by a negative one each time it hits the wall. And I flip these, the animated sprite just by multiplying its scale by minus one as well. As an easier method than flip horizontal. And then the ray cast if it is colliding. And then it is hitting a player because it's the only thing it can collide with. Um... I said a variable by getting the collider, so this is a reference to the player, which on completion of the beam animation, it will use that reference to change level. So for levels um, in the game manager, I gave it a level variable and then the max level variable. This should probably be a constant, but as it is, I just set it up like this. Um, I've made a second level that's pretty much an empty level. So for the change level function, that's also, um, it's actually stuff that's already covered in this series. So the game manager just adds one to the current level, which is one. So it become level will become two it checks to make sure that it hasn't reached the last level and then the variable level is made as a string and it just constructs um the parts of the string address for a scene using the level from game manager as a string so when when the airplane abducts the alien, um, the level will become two, and it will be added as a string, which creating res level level two dot tscn. And then when we change scene, we'll just use that string that's constructed here. Um, it's done like this because, as mentioned previously, a, a scene change has a return value that's an error code. So anything that is not a zero means an error occurred. Um, then if level has reached max level, then it's just going to go to the game over scene. In level one, I um, change the level around so you have to jump the jump to get down to the area where there's a movable wall. The movable wall is, this is just a quick implementation of it. And really to make it more reliable when a wall gets moved, rather than using physics to let it fall, um, it should probably have a force applied to it to have it move upwards because that's more reliable um, 
on instances the wall has actually gotten stuck falling. So this is just something to demonstrate, um, sort of make a challenge, make a puzzle, uh, and have the player move on to the next level. So in the next level, I've just created it as an empty scene, and I think what I'll do with the enemy is I'm going to make him drop so that he's far out of the way when the level starts and the player doesn't accidentally stomp him. Because we're going to use this enemy to just demonstrate going from start to end in the game. And other than that, there's no significant changes. As a recap, one of the problems that has been encountered in this effort is interactions between rigid bodies and the physics between the two kinematic bodies. So when a player is pushing a block at an alien or at an enemy, it's still having some bad physics. And the same thing happened with the wall. Um, if I left the floor open and the player could just push the wall at this enemy, the wall will get thrown. So there's some bad physics there. I'm not sure if that's a me problem or a Godot problem, but I've run into physics issues playing around in this game engine. So we'll just demonstrate. Um, I've given the start and end screens a little bit of artwork. So I changed the color rect to texture rect and made something with a matching font in GIMP for a start and end screen. So we'll just start it up. We can start by controller button press or mouse click. We'll do the platform thing. Do the jump thing. Take a hit falling. Oh, we hit the enemy, so we didn't take the hit. Get him out of the way. There's the wall almost getting stuck because it's not reliable that way. At this point, we'll just let the enemy kill us off. And maybe we can get that happen without the enemy dying. And then we'll get to the end screen. So yeah, that pretty much covers um, everything to be able to make a, a game and sort of gives an idea of what to avoid in a game and that would be too much using physics, um, like creating objects and making the game basis uh, largely based on physics. I don't think that's quite functional in this version of Godot which I've been on 3.22. I see that a new version was released, so I'm going to look at doing something 3D in, in the latest 3.32, um, I think it is, and see how that works and see if the physics is improved a little bit in that and a little more realistic for a game effort. So... That'll be sometime in the future. We'll look at doing something 3D. And until then, take care.